Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer and I am going to attempt to show you guys how to make a drawing slash painting of this beautiful timber wolf. The photographer's name is Tony Beck and he very kindly gave me permission to use his photograph um, for this lesson. So um, if you have a chance, go ahead and check out his photo gallery. He has some amazing photographs of nature. And I feel very fortunate to have this beautiful wolf in front of me, looking at me, ready to go. So when I say mixed media, I mean a lot of different things. So that could mean paint, it could mean colored pencils, it can mean markers, it can mean graphite, it can mean paint. Did I say that already? Um, it could be inks. It can be so many different things, especially when you're talking to me, because I am sort of a little bit of an art hoarder and tend to have and enjoy collecting lots of different art media. Uh, but for purposes of this guy, and um, who knows where this is going to go because this is sort of a little peek into my process. I have it all sort of planned out right now, but then, I don't know, maybe it's actually going to go a different direction, which could be good and could be not good. So we'll just have to see how it all turns out. Um... But just basically, initially, I'm just going to show you really quickly how to draw this guy using sort of the method that I like to use most of the time, which is just looking at the shapes. We'll draw him out, um, and then we will attack him with a whole bunch of uh, different media, and hopefully it will work out as planned. Uh, one never knows, however. So, to begin... I am just going to, uh, basically I'm going to first do this in graphite really lightly over here on this paper. Um, and then I'm going to go through a few other techniques um, that I actually just, well, I knew that they existed, but I just sort of started recently using them in my own practice, which is like using a um, toothbrush to apply sort of like this speckled look here of the darker parts of the fur. Um, that's where I'm going to be using some acrylic ink and dipping um, this toothbrush into the different colors of ink and then kind of just doing like one of these little, um, I don't even know what you call it. It's like you pull the bristles towards you and it sort of like sprays the, um, the media, the paint, the ink, out onto your paper. Um, and in order to make sure that we capture only these dark, darker parts, I mean, that's what I want to only paint this darker part. We're going to have to use, um, I'm going to use some tracing paper and cut, cut around, um, this guy and only leave open the parts that I want to, um, spray onto the, right, the canvas. Um, you'll see what I mean when we get to that point. Uh, otherwise, we will be using some Tombow uh, markers, which are these guys here. These are, if you follow me on any of my social media platforms, you will know that I really enjoy using these Tombow, uh, I call them watercolor brush markers, but they're just basically like, I mean, you can see this little um, paintbrush here symbol. That means that they are water-based. So if you lay these down first and then come on to it afterwards with this is called a water brush uh, you can see hopefully maybe a little bubble there going back and forth this this little bladder here is full of water and then this is where the water comes out just like a regular paintbrush you can also use a regular paintbrush and dip it in water and go on top of the tombos but i really like these water brushes um, for this purpose, it's totally fine. And then, I don't know, I have some acrylic markers, which are my other all-time favorite things to use. Um, this is Posca. Uh, and 
I really like them. I might use them, I might not today. So I just wanted to show you in case I do use them and I forget to tell you what they are. Uh, let's see, I might use some chalk pastels, which I have over here. It's just, this is just the Blick brand. Uh, chalk pastels and when you open them up they are so delicious oh my goodness you guys these are these guys go down like butter and they are becoming one of my new favorite media to use and then it comes with like this kind of cool little blender tool which just helps to kind of you know blend and spread the pastel on top of your canvas so yeah that is a direction that we that I plan to lead into, uh, we will see if I actually make it there. So without further ado, I believe we will get this party started. So basically I just want to show you kind of my technique for taking a look at a reference image. Um, specifically, this is, I guess, more so, this is how I uh, attempt to draw animals. People, I love to draw people as well. It's a little bit different system, but it is very similar to looking at shapes. So to begin, I think to myself, what shapes can I pull out of this guy and make this blank piece of paper not seem so big? And right off the bat, what I am noticing is we have, this is actually a hexagony kind of shape here a little bit more and let's see so it's, it's one two three four five six. yeah something like a hexagon otherwise if that's too tricky for you you could also just do a circle it might be more of a an octagon Right. So this is my first major shape and I try to look at the bigger shapes, start big by putting down the bigger shapes first and then honing in on the smaller shapes. So I'm just going to kind of show you some of these bigger shapes that I'm seeing. Sometimes the shapes are not something that you can actually define. They're more just abstract shapes, um, but they're a nice way to sort of you know, I don't know, like uh, break the sky down into more smaller parts. All right, so that being said, um, these ears here just cry triangular shape to me. I hope they do to you as well. Um, and then we have, so here I kind of look at He's got sort of like different layers of fur, which helped me sort of break the sky down a little bit. Oops, went a little bit in too far. So this part here seems like another major chunk. And then I've got like another shape here. I'm kind of looking at the, I guess the darker parts right now. Um, it just kind of helps me map him out. And then I'm noticing down here, this is like where his legs are. And then he is sort of, he's not, if you take a close look, he's not an actual straight on shot. He's slightly looking to the side. Uh, and the reason why I can tell that is because this right here, this fur over here is a little bit thicker than it is over here. So that's how I know that his face is a little bit more um, turned to one side. So the fur over here might be actually a little bit, you might be seeing a little bit more of this side of his face than you are that side. But anyways, that's just something to note. And then here, oops, this is kind of like where his hips, down here, down below. Um, don't don't mind yourself with this little um, yellowy piece of paint there. I was trying to 
be uh, organized and opening up my um, acrylic inks, but uh, one of them exploded on the paper. Anyways, over here is just a little bit of his tail showing. So you can decide if you want to put that in too. All right, so basically this is how I've kind of broken it down. And then inside his uh, face, he also has some cool shapes. So this, so it, down here, it kind of is more angular. And then this is almost like another hexagon shape. You could also just draw in a little circle there too. And then here, his eyes are very triangular shaped to me. Animals eyes, just to be aware, they are slanted. So when you start to render animals eyes, just make sure that you're putting them in a diagonal um, orientation and not a, a horizontal orientation. Horizontal is where you, this is how humans eyes are set on the on our skulls they are horizontal but animals are at usually at a diagonal it's not always like that but in this case it is so this is where i when i see you know when some people ask ask me how can i make my eyes you know look more realistic um oftentimes it's because the orientation of the eyes have been placed incorrectly so just pay attention because the eyes tend to be a real big focal point um, of anything. And then, yeah, I think that's basically it. I mean, up here, you want to make sure you capture the fur coming off the top of his head. So these are just like little di different landmarks that my eye tends to look at. And also then if when I go back in to do the color, the color rendering, I'm gonna look at these darker parts here too. And then this is calling out to me as well, this little section. And that just, this will help um, really define the three-dimensionality of his snout, right? And then down here, we have this cute little mouth, little darker part there. And then he actually has this little bit of his, the lower part of his jaw, his lips. So anyways, all of these things help me place his features in um, a very, in a uh, proportionally, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's get started. So I use a 2H pencil because it's, a, H stands for hard. Um, this I use this all the time. I've um, been doing botanic illustration for five years and I've always used this 2H. Um, I like to use it because it is very light because basically if you're going to go on top of your graphite with um, anything like watercolor, the, a lot of times the graphite will not, you won't be able to cover it up. And um, even though we might at the end, after we are done drawing, I will use a kneaded eraser to take down some of the um, graphite lines, it still will show through this like more translucent media. So um, that's why I try to use this lighter pencil. Um, and I try to make sure that I make my marks very light as well. So I'm going to sort of scoot this guy over a little bit. Actually, I'll just scoot myself over. And then I'm going to just show you what I mean. So this this guy right here, since I draw a lot of circles for people, that's how I'm going to start. And just pay attention. At, on top of the circle, you have ears. And you want to leave enough room up at the top so that the ears are not going to be missed. So come down lower than you might, you know, you might expect. And I'm just going to... For me, it's a lot easier to put in a better circle when I do it really lightly. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. I'll just lift that up to the camera where it is. There it is. All right, so that is my basis for starting. Um, now what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to put a line right down the middle of his face. 
course, now I can't find my black pencil. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm, I like to also divide this circle into quarters. And look, it's kind of cool because it helps to sort of break up his face into the smaller chunks, easier, easier chunks for drawing anyways. So I'm going to put that same cross in my, in my circle here. Again, really light because these are just my construction lines and then I'm going to erase these guys later. I like to start with the nose. Um, and when I do that, the nose here is actually right at the very bottom of uh, the circle and make sure you don't make it too big and don't make it too small. Um, it's just a matter of kind of taking a look at it in this um, grid that we've drawn and see, you know, how, how far over, how wide the nose parts are on, on either side of that. And that should help you sort of keep your, keep your guys centered. Um, and then if you want, you can just start to um, draw in his little, I guess these are called jowls. And notice, so actually, if you want, you could put in his little nostril hole here really, really quick, because that is actually a landmark that I'll tend to look at. Alrighty, so this top part of his jaw, like where the opening is, sort of matches right along where the top of that, um, where that nostril is. So then, then I'll know, I'll just kind of make a little loop there. And then it looks like his little lower part of his mouth is there and then try to match up the other side. And these are just, these are super sketchy marks. I don't want to put down, make anything too hard because I might actually want to go in and change things later. Okay, so now I'm noticing this little, it's kind of like a trapezoid shape of a little um, fur color. And that's, that might actually help me um, decide where to put other, other parts. So I'm going to put that in right now. Now, right in the middle of the cross here that we have in the on the reference photo is about that that um, horizontal line there that I drew across is kind of a good um, place to decide where the start of his eyes are going to be and where this sort of part of his snout is going to be. So I'm going to. Hopefully this is going to all work out as planned. I'm going to bring this line down. So I'm noticing that this part of his snout sort of starts in about this far. It's not an exact measurement. So, yeah. Forgive me for for everything. Any anything that is not going to happen the way that it's planned. These actually need to make this a little bit wider down here. All right, so then right next to the top, to the top of where the snout is here is where his eye is. Be really careful. I tend to make these eyes, make eyes too big. Um, I guess it's because I'm so attracted to the eyes, but so pay attention to where your eye placement is and where it is on the grid. It's okay if it's off a little bit, but just, you know, be aware of that. And then I'm just going to put in, so this line over here where the fur is a little bit darker, 
I'm going to kind of put that line in because that is going to hopefully help me with other things down the road. And then he has this other like little color change under his eye. And I'm going to put that in. If I can get one side done um, to my liking, then usually it's that's pretty helpful for me in figuring out the other side. He has these cute little eyebrows. So it starts right here at his pupil. So you can put that in. So we can start that up. It's like up in sort of a roundish shape. And then this is like another little eyebrow piece. I don't know if you guys can see that. This here and then this down here. These are all just little shapes that I look at and they help me sort of plan out my drawing a little bit better. Okay, let us continue. Let's see. Now, anything that has sort of like a, you know, a furry edge, don't make those so much I mean, right now it's okay just to put these uh, these sort of border border lines, I guess. Makes me think of a Madonna song. I'm not even gonna go there. Uh, but it helps me sort of decide, you know, where the color where the colors are going to be. Um, let's see. This guy is another big chunk comes down this way. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put in this little eyebrow piece. Okay, so we have one side of his face pretty well done. I'm gonna put in his ear now. And his ear is kind of fits exactly right in the middle of this upper, uh, it's, it's my upper right, it might be your upper left pie shape. So I'm gonna just, do this. Make sure you get the angle in right. Something like that. And then, just so we know that it's, it's a three dimensional section there. Okay, so now I'm basically going to try to draw in the other side of his face. And so this guy up again try to make sure that those eyes are not not too big and not too small also sometimes I use a ruler and it's all it's all fine and well when you have one side done but then the next side comes and everything gets all lopsided so I want to make sure that you know, like the tops here of his eyes are on the are on the same line. And it looks like we're in good shape there. So I'm gonna sort of like put in his eyeball there. And his pupil. And then I'm just gonna try to um to just really really look at just because, you know, the the little patches of fur are on this side. Um, they're, they are drawn out this way. Doesn't mean that they are drawn out the same exact way on the other side. This is a natural bean and um, things, things might look differently, you know, like the patterns on a cheetah or a tiger, they're not always the same on both sides. So just, attention to that. I'm going to raise that down a little bit so I don't get confused. Um, this is a really cool eraser. It's called a Mono Zero um, Tombow eraser and it's a click eraser and as you can see the tip of that is super duper small. It's really nice. I use it all the time for like um, fine 
fine erasing when I need to erase in small areas. So like the top of that area there, I can just go in with that nice small eraser and erase out really small sections. It's one of my all-time favorite erasers. I use it all of the time. You'll see me kind of going back and forth a lot. Um, and that's just how I, that's just how I work. I want to make sure that the, everything that I'm drawing out is being balanced and that I'm not just spending too much time on one area. So forgive me if it seems a little chaotic, but, um, that's just, that's just how it is. Okay. I'm seeing another little cool shape here. Um, actually that comes more this way. there and comes on down so yeah again I didn't want to I don't want to get too I want to get spend too much time on this part um, but it's very easy to do when I get into the zone then yeah look out okay so I'm gonna put the ears in here the same it's basically the same orientation is this ear, meaning that it's pretty much in the, um, the middle of this. It's my upper, it's my upper left, but it might be your upper right. And just make sure you get this angle correct and not come out too far. Sometimes if I need to check angles, I'll take my pencil and I'll um, lay it up against the outer edge or the contour of a certain shape. And then I'll try to bring it over to my paper and match it up. It does not always work out, but actually most of the time it does. It's probably one of the most helpful measuring um, tools that I use. And because his ears are, you know, 3D, they're sitting on the back of his head. I mean, we're gonna try to capture this guy in a more 3D position. This just lets me know back here that this is part of his ear as well. And then you can just put some real light strokes here for the top of his head. And then, you know, now basically the face for me is the hardest thing to do. So from here, I'm going to just now try to capture some of this really cute, you know, fluffy fluffy business on the first layer. So this, notice that this comes out here, like around his cheeks, if wolves have cheeks. And then it, it comes down really close to under, under his chin here, just like that. All right, and then I'm gonna take a look at this other next bigger shape. It's just like another like layer. Just make sure you start that at the at the point, at the correct point. I tend to look a lot at angles, which I'm gonna show you right here. So let's see, this connection here I look at, and this is a little bit different because like I said, his head is sort of adjusted to one side. As he's slightly looking to the, he's looking to his left here on just a little bit here. That's how I, that's, I know that because, well, okay, I don't know, no, know, know that, but I, I feel like I know that. All right, so I'm just going to come in here and just, you know, real loosely decide where some different, you know, layers of fur are going to be. That's how I work. Right, just sort of start building, building up the layers here. Mm -hmm. And then this is kind of where his haunches, actually, that's gonna come down a little farther and then makes a pretty sharp angle at the bottom. 
I'll bring this up so you guys can see. Do the same over here. And then his arms sort of come off. Oof. Bring that up a little bit. And yeah. And then over here we had a little bit of his um, a little bit of his tail was showing off at the bottom. Okay. Now then this fur over here was pretty a little bit thicker there. And then he has some more. I think what I'm I, I want to make sure you guys this is just again the way that I like to do it. I'm not going to put in every single fur. Uh, I just, I used to think that I liked to do it like that. I do like to do it like that for certain things. You know what? It probably just basically depends on my mood. Um, but right now I feel like I'll, I really just want to do this guy a little bit looser because otherwise this video would be like 16 hours long. And uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you don't want to listen to me talk that long. Okay. So now, right now, I basically am going to be looking at my reference photo and going back and seeing if there's anything that I might want to change um, or add. And, you know, I'm just trying to look at any sort of like problem areas that I think might not be good for down the road. Um, this I might bring that out. I mean, a lot of this is going to be real loose, furry, furry bits, so I'm not going to spend too much time. It's mostly the, the face that I wanted to get, get right, and those eyes, you know, because they tend to be focal point. I want to make sure that those, um, I don't know, have, have a dynamic and a very intense look as as the reference photo does. So yeah, I think at this point I'm going to call the drawing done and now becomes um, the next part of the video where I'm going to show you how to apply all of our different media. So join me in the next section. Hello everyone, welcome back to part two. Here is my wolf. This is actually a tracing of my wolf, as you can see. I like to use tracings in my, um, of most of my drawings because let's say for instance, like my plan for today is to make it look awesome. And let's say uh, it does not look awesome. And well, if it doesn't look awesome, if I have a tracing, then I can just throw that away and start over with this tracing. So that just is my way of making sure that I sort of have a backup. I don't do it for everything, but for some things that I feel like the potential is pretty high for things to go wrong, then I will do a tracing. So I have a, like a little um, folder full of different tracings. Um, also, it's pretty helpful, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to bring in like, let's say I have birds and flowers and plants and a whole bunch of other things on other uh, pieces of tracing paper, then I can bring them into this drawing and I won't have to just, you know, redraw other elements. They'll, they will already be done. So that is just a little trick for you guys um, if you want to, you know, keep on practicing your, um, doing it in different ways, you know, like, let's say I wanted to experiment with this wolf in other, um, other media, then I will have this tracing. And, um, I'm noticing right now that for some reason I did not put his eyeball in and that is not going to be very good now, is it? Okay, there we go. So that is just something I wanted to show you uh, that I do 
when, um, you know, putting together sometimes my guys. So here is the, here's the drawing. <clears throat> and this is tracing paper that we are going to use. And I went ahead and already sort of identified some areas that I want to um, cut out of that. So this picture here is our reference photo. And my idea is that I'm going to take this toothbrush. And I'm going to dip it in this acrylic ink, which I will show you what that's all about in a minute. But I only want to hit, I want to just do it with the darker parts just to give them sort of like a, like a sprinkled, um, sprayed kind of effect. And in order to do that, I want to be able to protect this white part. And also I want to protect the, um, border around him. So in order to do that, we need to have some place, some paper or something to cover up those areas that we don't want to capture in the spraying effect, right? It's kind of like airbrushing. So I went ahead and drew all the way around him on the outside. So I'm going to make a cut all the way around the outside. And then I made a little reminder for me. I want to cut out this darker part out of the, the bigger shape. And then I want to cut this part out. But I want to keep this part still intact and right over the middle of his face. Right? Because I want to keep the white parts white and just expose the darker parts. So I am going to cut those, cut that out right now. And I will show you how that's done. All right, guys, so now you can see the wider parts are protected by the tracing paper doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then so up in here is, are the darker parts and that's the darker part up here that's exposed. That's the part I'm going to spray. Hopefully it all works out. And then I'm going to protect his face and his eyes with this tracing paper. Um, yeah, so I will now show you how I am going to prepare the Okay, we're back. These are my acrylic inks that I am using. It's this um, Daler Rowney brand. And um, it's actually the same brand as my sketchbook, which I, can I just tell you guys, I highly recommend those sketchbooks. Um, they take all of my water, watery, wet media washes really well. They do tend to buckle and bubble a little bit, but then I just take an iron on the back side of them and sometimes on the front, but I uh, will put like a tea towel, a really thin towel on top and iron down the pages and they turn out really nice. But anyways, I'm here to talk about the sink. Okay, so I'm thinking that I'm going to do a mixture of sort of this is what I've chosen, like gray, um, a little bit of, this is called raw sienna. Um, I'm actually going to throw in some purple, believe it or not. Some bl uh, black, nope, sepia, sorry, this is sepia. I'm going to do black at the end with something else. And then I might just throw a few sprinkles um, of this Indian yellow, as it's called. So to do that, I'm going to basically, so you could just dip, so look, you just undo the, undo the lids here, and then you could just dip this paintbrush inside. Um, it's a little bit tight, but it, it will fit. So you could just dip it inside there and just do these layers uh, one at a time, which 
totally works. Um, or you could pour, pour like a little, a little, uh, actually, because these guys have droppers, we don't need to pour anything. You can just go in like this. And I'm just going to probably do that here. Just want to make sure that they don't like run into each other. So I'm just going to sort of put them right up against the inner edge here. And um, yeah, hopefully it will work as planned. But as you know, I'm already preparing for failure. If that's going to happen, then so be it. Uh, it looks like the uh, my stopper here is um, clogged. So there you have it. Live failure happening right now. No big deal. All right. I could just pour it out. I probably will. Okay, I'm going to bring in. This is like this really fun. I love, I don't know if you can see that color. Okay, I'm gonna try to just pour this color out without making a humongous mess. Let's see if that works, that's why I have paper towels. I didn't say that before. Definitely need to keep paper towels nearby. And apparently I need to make sure my stoppers work. Or droppers, I'm sorry, not stoppers. It's already a stopper because it's not doing anything for me. Okay. So now I have sort of like a gray and a purple and a brown and a yellow. And what I'm going to do is move that picture. Let's see if I can move these guys over to the side. I have a little jar of water so that I can dip my toothbrush in so it's a little bit wet just makes the spraying a little bit easier so I'm going to move those over to the side I'm going to move my lovely wolf over and then I'm going to reposition stuff here and just make sure you have it right because there is no going back um, and then I'm basically just going to sort of dip a little bit in there and a little bit in there. And mix, mix those colors together. Okay, and then, you know what? I forgot to get something, hold on. Sorry about that. I am using, I'm going to use a little popsicle stick. And the trick is to, and this, I know this goes against everything um, that you might think about how paint might be spraying on your body, but uh, this is the way that works. It really works. You want to pull the bristles with this popsicle stick towards you. So do you see how when you do that, it's sort of putting in, hmm. did you notice how that's popping up right now? I told you that this might not always work out as planned. So guess what I'm going to do? Now that I notice that that's happening, I'm going to take a piece of tape. Look, look, we're figuring this out on the fly. I should have realized that because this is tracing paper after all. Okay, tape that down. Now I'll know for next time, right? Now I'm going to tape that down. This is, this is an artist figuring out the problem live. Here, we saw it first in Jennifer Linderman Art, figuring it out. Art crises solved. All right. Nice. There we go. I'm going to make sure the bottom 
is taped down as well. Note to self, tape down the tracing paper. Okay, shall we try that again? I'm going to dip it into the gray and that brown mixture. And I'm going to take my trusty toothbrush and like the closer you are to the surface, like the bigger the drips will be. And then the farther away that you are, the, um, the lighter. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know, it doesn't matter. You don't need to know what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one maybe one more time. Um, and you know, you can take a look at your reference photo and try, try to see, you know, where some other darker parts are like in the middle of his forehead. We might wanna add a little, be sure you add more. I'm probably gonna just do a real quick base here. just to get, you know, some surface, just so that the white, a lot of the white is sort of taken. Looks like I might need to tape this down again. I'm, I'm so glad you guys are watching, watching this happen. You know, I could have had this already all worked out, practiced ahead of time. But, well, you know, that's okay. It is just not going to happen that way. Oopa. Okay, that's all right. And, you know, you can, you can tap it like this, too. If you want some bigger drops, you just flick it right and that's also interesting just flick it okay so now what I'm gonna do is actually I want to do the purple I'm gonna so I'm rinsing my toothbrush in this water I'm gonna dry it off just a little bit so it's not so drippy and then I'm gonna put it in the purple. I'm just, just, I'm just rubbing it around like this and you can, you know, sort of shake it out a little bit if you want, but it should be okay. Um, now I'm, I'm looking at my reference photo sort of off camera here so I can see where I want to concentrate a little bit of the darker parts. So I'm going to put darker parts in here and then you know I said I wanted to do it kind of more in the middle this totally reminds me of like airbrushing right now this is going a little bit under I noticed because I didn't you know because I did not know that I needed to tape it down which is like a duh duh moment but oh well like I said, you know, we'll, we will, we will just deal with it. Cause you know what? We're artists and we can, we can handle this. We, nobody is going to stop us. So I'm just going to go around, right? I think this purple is going to look really cool. Okay, so now I'm going to add in a little bit of the yellow, which means I'm going to rinse out my trusty toothbrush. Um, by the way, do not use this toothbrush to brush your teeth. This is a paintbrush now that looks like a toothbrush. So make sure you mark it or put it out of sight so that no people or children think that it's okay to use to brush their teeth because that will probably not end well. All right, now I'm going to do the same here in this yellow. I'm just going to, this I'm not going to um, 
use too much of. I just want a little, a tiny little bit. I'm going to put this more down, down the middle, like down here, and a little bit up there if I can get it to work out. Um, this technique is kind of cool because it's sort of random and it's a little spontaneous. And you don't really know how it's going to turn out. But anyways, this is how this is supposed to work out. Okay. I think I might go in a little bit one more time with the darker color and then I'm going to let it dry. Dry, dry, dry. That is the key to success in most everything artful. And I'm just going to see about maybe trying just more pure See? Oh, wow, this one is really drippy, you guys. Be very careful. I would be afraid. I should be afraid. Okay. some bigger drops dripping and for me it doesn't bother me and it doesn't scare me so I'm just letting you know that it's gonna be fine it's actually gonna look really cool with these bigger globby um, drips so you might encourage it a little bit here here and there okay I think I'm going to actually leave it there because we can fill in you know some of these darker parts um, a little bit with different media later um, so right now I'm just kind of taking a look and making sure that it is the way that I want it I really like that um, purple in there this is the gray I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to try to fill in the gray because it's not overbearing. You don't want this to be, you know, I mean, I want you to still see this like speckled look, but I don't want it to be so white either, even though we will go on top of it later with some stuff. Just want to make sure we can still see, you know, the different colors. So... do a little more splattering there. Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. So at this point, I am going to let it dry. Now, before I do that, I'm going to actually remove this uh, tracing paper because I don't want, I'm afraid now that this stuff might soak through the, tra the tracing paper, which it might have already done that. And then, yeah, well, then there's that. I am going to very gently try to remove the paper. It's probably a better idea to just let it dry, um, but anyways, that plan did not work out. Okay, so I'm just going to lift that up. Pull this out. Okay, you guys, this is looking really cool. So, look, there's what it looks like right now. That looks really cool. Um, these little globby bits, like I said, sort of slipped under. It's not a big deal because, I mean, this is what we have and this is where we're, we're headed. So, um, that 
texture is making my heart sing. So I hope you're enjoying looking at this right now. Um, anyways, I'm going to let it dry and then we will come back for part three. Okay, everyone, I'm back. This looks amazing. I feel like it looks amazing. I'm gonna just see if you can see that up close, see the cool textures that we got from that spray technique. I know it looks kind of maybe strange right now, but it'll make a really cool base for when we add our other details on top. So I think before I even deal with that, um, I am going to sort of fill in his facial features and then also his uh, body part down here. So I think what I'll do is probably start with his eyes and I might do that in color pencil. Um, this is a Prismacolor colored pencil and it's basically my favorite brand of colored pencil. So I'm going to just uh, fill in the eyes here. I'm going to give him sort of a a little bit brighter color than what's photographed so that those guys will really pop. Um, if you wanted to tone this down, you could add in, you know, like a maybe a greenish, bluish tone. Or even a little purple actually would be kind of cool because he has purple on there already. So I will actually use a uh, Micron ink pen. Um, this is a permanent ink pen that's um, resistant to water, but I like to use these guys when I want something to really, uh, like a if I really need like a deep black, I tend to use that. So I'm just filling in his pupils here. And then I'm probably going to go use the ink pen to go around his eyes as well. It's that way I can make sure I can get a real good um, get, um, I can get good coverage um, just because this is a real sort of small tricky spot to get into so yeah that's why I want to use this pen And then I'll probably come on top of that with some color pencil to uh, lighten up parts of the, the black. But this is um, nice to get get his eye in. I'll go on top here, make sure you have a nice um, thicker, thicker line there. Okay, you know what? I think for the other darker, dark part, I'm going to fill in his 
His um, nostrils here are super, super black. So I'm just going to fill that in. You don't have to use the pen. You can use whatever you want, whatever color you want. But I just thought since I'm here, I'll use this pen. Okay, kind of covered up that line. Alrighty, ooh, look at that. Now is he's starting to come alive. Um, I'm going to now use a little color pencil just to go sort of on the bottom part where a little bit of that light hits on that outer, it's like the inner inner edge actually of his eye that just helps to kind of define that as a you know a deeper orifice and then you can add a little bit of that white on the eye here too That's looking cool, you guys. All right. I think what I might do now is use one of my um, Tombow markers and start filling in some bits here, like his nose. So I'm going to now start to look at some bigger shapes that I want to, you know, fill in. I'm going to start kind of light here. So I'm sure that I don't get too dark. And these guys spread pretty well with the water, so I'm not going to like fill the whole thing in. So that's just sort of a little lighter area. And then I'm going to Seems like right above the nostrils is a darker color. Come down here. Mm -hmm. And then it's like a little bit darker band right here. And then while I'm here, I can just sort of fill this part in too. And also under now that I'm looking at this guy I'm wondering if I should go in with some just go around his facial features with that ink pen just to make them pop a little bit more because we have such a strong um, presence here with that spray so I think that. I might go ahead and do that right now just so that the his features won't get lost. I need something that's gonna sort of bring back the strength here of his features. I mean, also because some of that spray went over in places that I, you know, didn't want it to because we had that kerfuffle with the, uh, the, uh, tracing paper that, right, was not, ta um, was sort of starting to fold up and then some of the paint went underneath it. So yeah, there's that. Okay, I think this is gonna actually help a lot. 
All right, so I'm going to go in here and just sort of go over my pencil lines. I think it'll give him a stronger, bolder look. But it doesn't have to be, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be like perfect, perfect straight lines is what I'm trying to say, um, because these are like, you know, parts of his fur. So make sure, and that's why I'm going over them really like more loosely. It's just enough to give him, give us the idea that these are um, fur. This is fur. Like I said before, I'm not gonna fill in this part here though. I might make that a little bit darker because um, that seems like it's a cool part of his, his face. And then I'm going to go off here. Okay, so this... doesn't have to be um, so evident because I probably will go over that with some other media to um, help sort of darken this stuff. But anyways, just so we don't lose lose the idea that we initially started with. Okay. I think that's looking better with that ink pen. You have to think about, you know, the strength of certain areas of your composition, which I noticed um, with the pencil lines. I don't know. It just seemed like these, these two sections here right now are so powerful. I didn't want it to overpower the rest of his um, body, which it still might actually be like that, uh, but we will see. Okay, let's continue on with the Tombos. So I think I'm just going to try to fill in um, his face up here. So I have... Um, Let's see, you guys, I need to get some paper so that I can practice my stroke song, and I should have gotten that out ahead of time. So I usually always, especially before I put these Tombos down, will lie, lie down some colors, lay down some colors, sorry, lay, lie, oh, grammar. Um, these are some colors that I chose ahead of time to see about putting them down uh, in here for his face. So if I took a look at the reference photo, I can kind of hold them up there and, um, yeah, kind of looks like this, these three in there are probably going to be a better choice. So that's the one I'm not going to use. I'm going to put that over there to the side. Let's see. I might start with this guy. And um, you know what? At this point, if you wanted to, you could erase your pencil lines. Um, because these Tombos are actually 
kind of um, translucent at times and so those pencil lines will actually show especially with like lighter colors so if you wanted to um, not see those lines you want to make sure you erase your pencil lines. So that is what I'm going to do. Oh, just realized I forgot to put his tail, identify his tail. Um, I'm just using a paintbrush to uh, brush off the eraser crumbs. I don't know. I feel like sometimes if I have oils in my hands and then I, you know, swipe across the piece of paper, it's not going to, it's going to leave a mark or something. So, all right, let's see how this is going to look. I'm going to start adding in kind of these lighter colors because then we can go on top with the darker colors. I guess I kind of erased some of those lines that I had down previously, but that's okay. We'll just figure it out. And then this part, once we have this all sort of laid out, this is gonna, this is going to happen pretty quickly. come in here with some um, darker colors and then I'm gonna to go over on top of this guy I'm gonna use some of my chalk pastels and maybe some actually you know what I might do is to use those acrylic markers um, to put sort of put in more of these like fur lines I hope this is gonna work out. That's all I gotta say. We shall see. Um, now I can use some of that lighter color for down in here. This is just a way to kind of, you know, get rid of the white, basically, what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna get some of that gray color I was using before. So make sure you make the lines in the same direction as the, the fur because you will see it when you, because not all of these marks are going to go away completely, which is why I like I like that effect, especially for like animal fur. I noticed down here, we have a little bit of a warmer, warmer look. Um, let's see about what this color looks like. It's kind of a cool color. I might put that in, because we have some sort of like It is kind of like a peachy color, a little bit in here too. So I'm just gonna go on top there. Hmm, I wonder if I should add in a little bit of that around here. I might do that so that we don't have just that little part down there. Because if we just leave one color in one section, um, it might 
it might draw your eye to that. And so you kind of want to put similar colors all the way around so that um, your eye wants to travel around, you know, your composition. Okay, so now I'm going to use a darker gray. I'm going to put this down first. Make sure. I want to make sure that's pretty light. So, yeah, I think that darker one is going to be... Actually, you know what? I think I might put this sort of like steely steely gray color in here. And then it's sort of like under his eye. And then let's see his eyebrows. And then we have the darker color around, don't we? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to use that darker gray. There, we put that in. I'm not really sure how this is gonna work on top of this, but it looks like it's actually kinda covering that up as I was sort of hoping it would, so. Okay, so that's good to know that that's... So actually, you know what? Instead of the pencil, I think I'm just going to go in here now. I don't know, you guys. This is, this is an experiment, so bear with me. his eye now we have so I wanted to get rid of this hard line you know and um, yeah so I'm glad to know that this is actually gonna be covering that up This is kind of a long process of filling this in, so and I know it looks kind of weird right now. Bear with me. We'll get through this. I'm just going to fill in some of these parts. This stuff is pretty... I'm feeling a little... I kind of like the idea of that uh, creamy color I was using before. So I think I'm going to just go back in. Fill that in. Okay, sorry. I just saw something that I wanted to change a little bit. So this is all going to hopefully blend together. 
We shall see. Let's see, this under here is actually a little darker. That's gonna make set his eyes back. All right, so let's see, I got that here. I'm just um, trying to give, get some of his, you know, features back here that we kind of lost with the um, the spray. But as you can see, we can get that back. Can't we? We have the power. Okay, and then yes, this this is gonna help to kind of define that. He has a darker part here. Okay, I hope that this paint stays the way that it is when I come in with the water brush. Um, I don't know. You guys will see if this is going to work or not. Okay. So now I'm going to take this gray and let's see. How's this? here so I am gonna use this to go underneath because he has this kind of darker band and then I'm just gonna kind of in parts and mostly I'm just trying to get rid of that hard hard edge edge. And try to make it so that it can blend in a little bit. Okay, should have had my breakfast, I guess. I don't know if you can hear my stomach growling, but, um, that was my stomach growling. This is like my way of getting my art lesson in is I have to do it early. Um, be careful where you put your finger down because my hand is like covered in some of this stuff I was putting my hand down on and I noticed that when I put it down it was sort of also coming across on the paper. So you could use a paper towel under your hand to prevent anything getting dirty. So down here, I, there's a little bit of a gray part. I'm just gonna lightly put that in. And that'll help to define these parts. And then I'll probably go on top of it uh, with more stuff, but so this gray part kind of comes down a little more. Okay, and then he has on his tail. Don't want to forget about that. That's what is the little part I was looking at right now for his tail. And he has a little bit of that little reddish part. And I might throw in a few strokes of that red color. Okay, I'm excited to see if this is going to work. Um, okay, 
What do you think? Should we try a moment of truth? So we are at this point now. And now what I'm going to do is grab my one of my water brushes. And that looks like this guy. So I'm going to squeeze. There's like a little bladder here in the middle. I'm going to squeeze it and some water is going to come out. So first of all, I'm going to make sure that it's water's coming out. I'm going to actually do these cleaner parts first before I go on top of that paint, even though that says that it's permanent. We shall see. I'm just kind of sort of like moving my brush back and forth. And since, since this part in here is darker, um, I'm making sure I'm cleaning off my brush first before I go into the lighter colors if I, you know, want to save the lighter colors. And if I want to make sure that they stay light. Okay. Okay, I'm going on top of this stuff and it looks like it's staying. And because this is translucent, you can see that really cool pattern underneath it. So, um, you can't see my face, but I'm actually smiling really, really big. That means that it worked. And that means that I'm going to have a lot more fun with this technique. And you guys should too. Oh my God, it is so fun to sit there and push push that little make the spray come that was like so fun and you see when i put the water here on the the tombow here the um it tones it down quite a bit so that's why you know you might want to go in after or maybe maybe that's going to be enough but it does really work really really well I think as far as like a cool watercolor -y effect You have to be careful though if you touch other parts of the of the tombow with the water brush you know since it kind of it, it's water soluble it will bleed into um the other parts so you have to just be aware of that okay i'm gonna you know just hit it now See if how that's going to work. Let's see, I might actually come back in with the, so, like the darker parts, you can see how that once when I hit it with the water brush, it totally toned them down. So, I'm probably going to go back over those parts. And hopefully I remember to do that. Okay. 
sometimes uh, you need to help the water come back out again or it just needs a little help if you feel like it has stopped then you have to kind of help that water come out again by just uh, squeezing the tube here is what I mean so I'm kind of going pretty quickly over the, at least the top of where that ink was, because I just wasn't, I'm not sure if, you know, I should stay on it too long in case it would start to bleed out. So, kind of cleaning my brush here, because this is, these are the darker parts. Um... Okay, this is cool. I'm gonna, I like leaving and seeing some of this, you know, spat, spatter. So I'm gonna clean my little water brush and now just try to hit these sort of lighter colors. Really squeezing my, I'm squeezing. I put a, I put a lot of water on my stuff because I really like that effect. So You guys, this is looking pretty cool, I think. Again, just really squeezing. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. It's kind of like this sort of back and forth motion. I mean, that's just because that's the kind of effect I'm trying to get here. Okay, that's, that looks so cool, I think. I love this sort of more like misty look here. I think it, I think it speaks well to his, his attitude. Um, but that being said, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in or darken up those darks, like I said it was. Um, so before I do that, you want to make sure that uh, what you have down here is completely dry. So I'm going to pause this for a moment and then come back. And basically from here, uh, we can just put in the finishing touches. So we are almost done with our lovely wool. See you soon. Hello guys, I'm back again, long time no see. Um, I am here now to just do the finishing touches. I, I wanna just basically go back in and darken up um, some of these areas. So um, before we move on, so the areas that I'm gonna be kinda concentrating on are sort of more like this darker, these darker areas here on his face, his nose. Um, I'm going to darken his ears a little bit and maybe throw in some more darker parts down here. I'm going to probably use chalk pastels for most of that. Um, however, I think I want to, for his nose, I just want to use a color pencil um, so that I feel like I have more control over the the color there because I don't, I don't want to ruin that. So I'm just, I'm just going to fill in his nose with this colored pencil um, and I'm just doing these sort of like ovally strokes 
This is this is the best way to get a seamless color lay down. And again, this is a Prismacolor color pencils. I just love them so much because they feel like butter going down. They are so smooth and delicious. Um, yeah, so the way to get, you know, a deeper look is just to press down harder in those parts that you want to show that it's a little bit darker. Try to fill this in all the way. Okay, I might do it down here too, because that's where a little start of his mouth is. And then just a tiny little bit above here. I have to be careful with uh, this color pencil stuff, because once I get a color pencil in my hand, uh, there's a good chance that it's all over, that I just will spend hours. I just, I love the feel of a colored pencil in my hand. It's, I don't know what it is. It's kind of scary. Um, I do, uh, I do use a lot of times this magic pencil, as I call it. It's a colorless blender. It's just the same kind, kind of makeup that's in a regular colored pencil, but it's colorless. And what you can do is this actually blends the color. If you had more than one color, it will blend it together. I'm just trying to get this more smooth. So this, this is a good way to just push all the color into the paper. And uh, yeah, that could be another, that could be a class in an op of itself. All right. So you see how that just sort of brings that really, it deepens the color and it pushes it into the paper. I just absolutely love colored pencil. Um, the other thing now I will do is kind of so that we see that there are some, there's some light being spilled and some parts. I'll just put a little white down here. It's typically kind of like right around the ridges. And just so that doesn't show up so much. I'll take it down a little bit. You can go back the colorless blender. Um, I think I want to make sure that that nose has better closure, so I'm going to bring in my pen here. All right, you can go back in and deepen some of those darker, darker parts with the pen. Ink pen goes over the colored pencil. No problemo. And this, I might make this a little bit darker. Pretty cool, guys. Okay. Probably gonna go in this area too with a little more um, definition. I think I might use my ink pen just so that that 
shows up better as um, fur. I don't want it. He, he kind of is all in his fur there, but I just want it. This is just a thicker thicker pen. This is an um, an 08. I was using a, an 02 before. So, yeah, I could easily just darken the areas with this, but I kind of wanted to play around with some chalk pastels. Um, so, yeah. Let's get this party started. Okay, so this is the black. Um, and what I'm probably gonna do, because this part here is kind of narrow, I don't want this to be spreading everywhere. I'm gonna lay down like a little palette first. Of This is just the Blick brand of, um, they call them Artist Pastel. And I absolutely love them. So I'm going to use this um, paper stump for getting it on my paper stump and then I'm going to use this as sort of like my paintbrush and then go in to be working. Um, just kind of I don't know, what is that? I'm just sort of going up and down. That's the the stroke I'm using just to fill in those parts that lost their darkness. Also right here next to the eye and just basically this entire section right in between. I want to darken that and really bring the attention to his eyes. I noticed also there's just a tiny little bit of darkness on his um sort of his fur here but I don't I don't want it to take it down all the way so I'm gonna just suggest some darkness there. Now we can just have fun putting this these this darker color, this black actually uh, wherever you think you want to darken up stuff. So I'm going to do that up here. I have to be really careful with this chalk pastel. I have to be very careful because it will go all over the place if you're not careful by protecting your hand. So you might have to, you know, lay down some more color from time to time. Because it'll just run out, you know, just like a regular. Okay. And just to give it the suggestion of fur, just to soften this area up. Just bring it in a little bit like that. Okay, this area here is a little darker. So, and again, it, this underneath effect works really well with these chalk pastels because they are also translucent in nature. Okay, we're moving down, we're moving down. 
I might put a little, little darkness there. Let's see. A little bit more on top. I probably do some stuff in here on the outside of his fur. And um, yeah, now I'm just kind of trying to see where I want some more of this, the darkness to pop. I might put a little soften up that edge here a little bit under his. Okay, guys, this is so fun. Like, dang. I mean, this is even more fun than I thought it was gonna be. Which is kind of dangerous because I already spent lots of time uh, making art. Ask my family. But I was thinking this could be a really cool technique for like because I like to draw portraits too of people. But that could be kind of a cool under underpainting, if you will, for hair. Yeah, I might have to actually try that. So, yeah, I kind of feel like we're getting we're getting to the end. Oh, it looks like I forgot to blend down my my tail colors here. Can't forget that. Sorry. I just was um, I forgot to blend down my um my tail colors. And uh, yeah, my light bulb just went out. I have these lights that have batteries on them and the they only last so long, so that one just went out. So I have a backup light, which is why the color of the light just changed. But um, so yeah, sorry about that. But it's actually kind of good timing because we are very close to the end of our lesson. I know this is a long video and I appreciate you guys hanging in there. Okay, so let's see. I might look at his mouth here, sort of. Kind of de decide where I want, sort of, you know, this could be like a little bit of the shadow happening here. I think I might darken up underneath his eyes with this, but also I'm probably going to go in with that marker again because I feel like I lost some of the dark intensity of that. Um, but I might actually do this up here. that it's sort of like, you get the idea of his, his fur back there, right? Okay. Let's see, guys, what do you think? I think, I think we are really close to being done. I think I might want to just add, like I said, the detail um, of his eye with that ink pen. sure 
that those stay really intense. Just felt like it had lost its intensity and I just wanted to pull that back a little bit. So, yeah, 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 yeah. This is looking awesome. Okay, I think what I might do, I have this acrylic marker. I use these um, Japanese Posca, they're called Posca pens. Um, and I might go in right in here and make sure that this is working. Sorry guys. Sometimes I have to like, you have to push, push these guys down the paint started. I don't know if that's going to work. So uh, that doesn't seem to want to work right now. So you know what I'm going to do is use my handy dandy white colored pencil. I just kind of wanted to bring some of the bring some of the fine fineness of his fur back right here and you can do that sort of like throughout if you want to um, just here and there it just kind of helps And these work really well with the um, chalk pastel. Don't want to get too too crazy, but you know, if you wanted to just kind of add in some more fur marks, you could do that. Uh, but you have to be careful not to remove some of the work that we've done. So. I don't know, I kind of decide, decided I want to keep this area really dark. So I'm going to go back over that, which you can do. It will almost cover it completely. And maybe a little... So, yeah, I'm feeling like I would like to say that he is, for the most part, done. Now, if you wanted to fit, put a background in, you could certainly do that. Um, you could use, probably at this point, a good plan for that would be more pastels because you know, because of the fur, the way the fur is right now, especially if you were to come at this with another, um, like water soluble media, it would probably would, you know, it would take away some of the work that we've already done. So if you want to keep, keep this, I would suggest probably a dry media, like maybe color pencil or pastel. I think a pastel background would be really cool. Um, I think I might just, with this black pencil, I'm going to kind of thicken up this down here. Also, it has a nice, you know, sort of smoother feel to it. Mm-hmm. Color pencils are really cool to go back in and sort of refine details. Um, they're, they are so versatile, which is why I love them so very much. Yeah, so I'm just taking some time, taking a look at him, deciding, you know, if there's anything I want to change or add. And um, basically, I think that he is a done deal. 
um, my suggestion, like I was saying before for the background, I might actually put like a light purple color for the background. Um, something not too dark because he's dark. You want something that's kind of contrasty. So we could do like a couple of different colors. So I might actually put in a couple of these um, sort of this lighter lavender or this darker purple, put that in the background um, because he has some of that sort of purple in his, in that splatter that we did earlier. And um, that could actually be really cool. I think those two colors would go nicely with the gray and stuff. So I'm not going to take the time to do that right now, but you guys should go ahead and do, do whatever you would like. So thank you so much for joining me in my mixed media wolf painting. And I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. And I look forward to seeing you back at my YouTube channel. If you like this lesson and would like to see more, please subscribe. Oh, and you can also find me on Instagram at Jennifer Linderman Art. And I'm going to sign off and have another cup of coffee. Thanks guys. Take care.